Welcome to Contemporary Black Voices, where we examine and discuss issues within and beyond the Black community. I'm your host, Dr. Sharon Michael Chadwell. With me today are New York Times bestseller Caleb Alexander, as well as community activist and entrepreneur Chris Dawkins. Missing is author and screenwriter Fred Williams. Well, 2023 came to us with a series of events affecting the Black community or just got us talking. For instance, Justice Kantaji Brown Jackson became the first Black woman to be confirmed to the U.S. Supreme Court. Brittany Griner came home to her family after being in prison in Russia. The Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act finally passed. After being stolen in 1924, a Manhattan beach front, beachfront property was returned to the descendants of Willa and Charles Bruce as an act of reparations in 2022. Now they're selling the property back to Los Angeles County. Diversity, equity, and inclusion programs on higher education campuses have just become a thing of the past. Critical race theory got hijacked and became the clarion against anything Black, especially in public education. Affirmative, affirmative action got dismantled. There is the current war between Israel and Hamas. There has been a realignment among some African countries to regain power from colonizers and take control of their country's resources. The color purple got reimagined from its Broadway musical with controversies related to pay disparities among Black actors. And the list continues. So the question of the day is, what event or events capture your attention the most and why? Who wants to go first? <laughs> okay. My man? Ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, really all of them, but um, I guess in, in one of the, I guess one of the one of the biggest spaces that I like that I would watch um, uh, because I, I, I my my uh, forte is foreign policy uh, is probably the realignment uh, between the African uh, what's going on in West Africa and so uh, it's definitely a space to watch um, it, it could be a, a catalyst for something uh, larger uh, you have three three uh, countries um, in uh, West Africa that have thrown off, thrown off the colonizers, got rid of the, uh, the, the puppet presidents and are, are uh, trying to uh, actually uh, merge with each other, merge economically and, and politically and align themselves militarily. Uh, and so that's a, that's a big space to watch. Those countries have taken control of their resources. Uh, and since they've thrown out the French, I'll give an example. Uh, Niger now is the fourth uh, fastest growing economy in the world. <laughs> uh, Burkina Faso is the sixth fastest growing economy in the world. And, uh, and that's because of what? They've gotten rid of the French. Okay. <laughs> so uh, France was paying them 32 cents a, a gram, I believe, for their uranium, whereas on the international market, it goes for $400. Uh, and so that once they threw out the French, they were able to uh, sell it themselves. For, they didn't even charge 200 I mean, 400 They charged $200 for it. Uh, but it's a lot better than 32 cents what France was paying them. So, I mean, that's it's what I'm saying. It, it could be a, a catalyst for further... Uh, uh, unity on that on that continent, which has been a, a long dream uh, to to um, a lot of the uh, the heroes of the continent, the people who uh, who fought for independence. It's been a, a long since a long uh, since dream, and so uh, I I kind of view this as a continuation of that of that independence movement. So, as foundational Black Americans, mm -hmm. what can we learn? What can be our big takeaways? Can something like that happen here in the United States? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, the 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 probably the biggest lesson that that we can pull over here is uh is uh taking control of our own uh, destinies, um, defining ourselves for ourselves. You know what I mean? So there's the, this big thing about Afro uh, futurism, and, and what that is is basically uh, deciding who you are and for yourselves. And so I think that one of the lessons to be drawn is uh, developing our own uh, economies and. Um, relying on ourselves. You know, when you start looking at black communities, you have a lot of the cornerstones are owned by uh, 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 Muslim groups. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the hair, the hair shops, nail salons are Be owned by, <laughs> by, by <laughs> Asians, okay? Can, do, can we come together and 
push those folks out of our communities mm -hmm. to where we can strengthen the, the, the recirculation of the black dollar among black businesses. Mm -hmm. And that's a big lesson, uh, again, to draw from that mm. is taking control of our own economic destinies. And so, yeah, if we, if we decide to, uh, and here's a shout out to Carl, if we decide to support black, buy black, you know what I mean? Uh, support black business, uh, it, it can definitely happen. So it, really, it's, it's up to us. It, it's up to us. What you want to say about this? For me, it's a good segue for me. Um, you know, I'm looking at, I've had many jobs, uh, been an entrepreneur. So first of all, from the entertainment standpoint, I would like to uh, acknowledge, you know, that we lost Tina Turner. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, this year we also lost Sidney Poitier. Mm -hmm. So I think that those are, those are two people that we lost. But uh, in relationship to what Caleb is talking about, economic power, I think you got to look at uh, what Kanye West did with the uh, Nike. With, not not Nike, uh, Adidas. Adidas. Yeah, what 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 he did with Adidas, and I think the majority of Black folks did not even know about the role that he had and the amount of money that was being made through this particular person. We just mm -hmm. thought Kanye was crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but, but that is something. And then when you take it a step further, when you begin to look at both what Taylor Swift and Beyonce have done for this year, both in their concerts as well as what they've done in live performances, and then they took it one step further to make movies of it. So they've been, to a certain degree, almost like a, a double or triple threat with the things that th with the, the things that they have done, and that has created to the economic things that we have done. So we are building up the capital and the entrepreneurism to be able to do the things that you talked about, Caleb. So as we think about the economic economic possibilities. Uh, there's a lot that can be said. Last week, we talked about side hustles. I'm seeing more and more information coming out on how side hustles is really a, a hidden gem. It's a hidden gem where you can make a lot of money. The sky is the limit. And so as we think about what you're saying and what you're saying, how do we get our kids motivated? even more so to move beyond the lemonade stand, move into uh, the more side hustles, motivate them to even look at AI as a future mm -hmm. uh, economic builder in the black community. And I'll start. Um, you know, I think that uh, what has to happen is you talk about how do we merge that together. The one thing that hasn't happened, it's uh, been happening kind of like in silos per se, but we need education to be able to train our kids to be entrepreneurs, to be able to do that. Because mm -hmm. the most important thing is to be able to have a job or if they get mad at a white company, they, if there ain't no black company to go to, <laughs> they better be nice to the white company because <laughs> you still got bills to pay. So my point is, is that we have got to nurture and cultivate our youth to be able to have businesses so that as we build this foundation of economic support and we've got that, we now have to have them to be able to uh, have their own businesses and support and, and buy black, as you said. Yes. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really excited about what can happen in 2024. And again, especially as we start looking at Africa, what, what else is going to happen in Africa that we can take some huge takeaways from. You know, the big thing about uh, Niger and other West African countries kicking out the colonizer, we have known for years that the colonizers have basically hijacked the resources. And we've got resources such as uh, elements used to, the minerals used to make cell phones. Uh, there's, a lot to, there's a lot to be made there there's a lot to invest there as far, as far as Blacks. So we have a lot to learn. We have a lot, a long way to go. Plus, we have to learn, I think, other pieces. Even though it's easy to say, we have to learn to 
trust one another more and, a, and able to make a lot of stuff happen economically within the black community. Mm -hmm. You know, I agree. Huh? I agree. you agree? I agree. With my I kids. definitely agree. Definitely agree. So with that being said, I'm going to look at the big three that caught my attention. The removal of DEI or diversity, equity, and inclusion policies and practices on higher education campuses, as well as in many corporations. Also, the dis dismantling of affirmative action, and then my baby, critical race theory. So when we start looking at how all of these, these are really, there's a huge intersection between all three of them, okay? Uh, it's kind of like who came first, the chicken or the egg, okay? I, I don't, you know, in this case, I think it was just fear, okay? Um, in schools, we're seeing a dismantling of really black history or a watered down version of, walk, of, of what uh, black history to where even slavery is no longer slavery. It was more of a volunteer more of an indentured <laughs> servant type effect. Right. We're even seeing Nikki Nikki Haley try to do a, a oh. low key <laughs> yeah. re uh, definition of what happened during the during the Civil War. She said that it was a, it was to uh, improve access to to certain rights such as freedom of speech, freedom to, to vote freedom to this. And I sat back and looked at it. I said, I don't even remember any of that in my, in my schooling. You know, she was trying to dismiss slavery altogether. Yeah. And now she's trying to backtrack and say, I'm from the South. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know this. Yeah. But, you know, we're seeing low bulb movements like that where they're trying to change the entire narrative of Black history. So I really want to applaud the Black churches in Florida where they have come back and say, you know what, we're gonna take it over. We will teach our kids black history. So kudos, kudos to them. Then if you wanna move over and look at the relationship between anti-critical race theory to anti-diversity, equity, and inclusion down to anti-affirmative action, there is a strong connection between the three, the, uh, the, uh, the three. So with that being said, I'm going to pause our discussion and we will come back to pick up from this point. <laughs> 